Well, hello. Welcome to the third of three interviews by Danny Volk in the Made Up with Danny Volk style. I'm Amy Mothersbaugh from Akron Soul Train. I'm the co-founder, vice president, and creative conductor. Today, Danny will be interviewing Arnold Tunstall. Yeah. Arnold is the director and curator at the Emily Davis Gallery, University of Akron Myers School of Art. Today we're in Arnie's home. The interview is about to begin and stay and watch for the final exciting reveal. Danny, are you ready to be made up? Let's do it. So you're at Akron U, yeah. the University of Akron. University of Akron. And you're at the Emily Davis Gallery. Tell right. me a little bit about what you do there. I'm the gallery director, so I'm in charge of making sure the gallery's full of art at all times. We showcase art for the students, sort of show them what, what's going on out there in the world. We show off, of course, um, artwork made by our faculty, which are all awesome artists, and the students themselves uh, from time to time, but mostly we bring in work from the outside to give them sort of an idea or to spark their interest and, and to educate, obviously. That's our, our mission. You're also an artist. I am. What is your art? I'm a photographer. And I, I love doing collage. I do a fair amount of collage as well, but um, my, my main training is as a photographer. Actually, I'm an alumni from the um, University of Akron. I was really influenced by both of my teachers, Andrew Borowick and um, Penny Rakoff, and I was mostly photographing the American scene, but uh, the two of them were very different, which was a great way to learn. So I would sort of bounce back and forth kind of schizophrenically between Andrew's influence on me, which was sort of the American scene. And then Penny was incredibly experimental, is experimental. And, taught me um, about alternative processes, taught me how to break the rules. So with your photography, can you tell me what you mean by American scene? I, I guess the best des description is, is if you know the work of Robert Frank and Walker Evans. The street, I'm really interested in, in the urban environment. Um, I'm not a landscape photographer, I'm not a portrait photographer. I like looking at uh, examples of what's out there in the world and how that describes who we are as Americans especially. I'm infinitely, um, interested in America and what that means and that changes almost every time I'm out. I've also always been attracted to American extremes. Living in the Midwest and sort of in the sort of normal areas of the world, um, going to Las Vegas or Washington DC or New York City especially is like America times a thousand. And I've always been really attracted to that visually, layers of things. But also in the Midwest, I love the lack of some of the changes and some of the neglect. So you've got a building that was built in the 70s sitting next to something that's built in the 19th century and they kind of layers of shitty old signs and you know funny random things and then something new thrown in on top of it. My time in the darkroom is my most favorite part of the process because I really consider myself a printmaker, and that's why I still work in the darkroom. I have a real love of papers, uh, which has been a struggle lately, that a lot of the companies that, that make these beautiful traditional darkroom papers are, are not really, oh God, you're a mess, <laughs> aren't really making them anymore, and um, trying to find out, there was a paper that I used for maybe 20 years that was just absolutely lush, and I would do um, uh, toning to it, so I, I can't even stop when, I'm, when I've made a photograph, it gets printed and then it gets toned. There's a, a lot of layering that I like to do to sort of add chemically to what's already there in the black and white film. That process for me is incredibly meditative, which is why I really wanted to have a darkroom in my house because I can zone out and do that. You know, when I get going making a, a series of prints, I can just go for hours and, and time just disappears. So tell me a little bit about Akron Soul Train and your involvement. Well, a woman named Amy Mothersbaugh called me up when we were um, applying. She was applying for, with uh, Nancy, a um, night arts challenge grant and said, would you want to be on my board? And this came through um, luckily and, and not surprisingly because it's a great idea to bring people in from the outside, to bring some sort of influence to other artists that are here in town and students, things like that. Um, and ours was a, had a, a really, really great sort of kick to it with the connection to Akron's transportation history and writing on the um, kind of trend with um, shipping containers and, and uh, restoration and things like that. I was talking to somebody actually last night at the benefit um, about like, sort of what's the most valuable thing you can give an artist. And 
we all were saying that that's time. Money's great, buying work is, is incredible, collecting work is really important, but what artists really want and really value is it's a free time. Being left alone, being allowed to make their art, and that's what we're doing at Equin Soul Train, is giving somebody the opportunity to sit down, be left alone, make some stuff. So you don't have experience with makeup. Oh, clearly. <clears throat> I see that you're using some cake decorating supplies. My husband gave me some, and as I'm making this up as I go along, I, I'm using a lot of black and white. I, I am a black and white photographer predominantly, but I'm sort of a frustrated painter and a frustrated colorist because i um, using black and white so often, which I love. I love what happens with black and white film when you take color away from something. You can't tell what time period it is sometimes because the color that's sort of in fashion gets uh, hidden. It can be nostalgic and it can be confusing as to what, what you're looking at. But that also gets to be a bit of a crutch. And color is really important. I mean, that's how we see. We see in color, which is really fun to sort of play with, having that removed. But it also um, is frustrating to, to not have that. So I've been playing with my digital camera a lot lately. My digital camera, I should say, my iPhone. It's the camera that I have on me. You know, and the camera that you have on you is the one that's used most. I have been playing with color again with that. It's been really fun. So do you feel like my face reflects the American scene? <laughs> no. Terrible. <laughs> Is it not doing what you wanted it to do? I didn't know what I wanted to do. That's the problem. I'm sorry, I'm not going to poke your eye out, I promise. Okay. <laughs> I think I'm gonna stop. We're ready to reveal? I think so. <clears throat> Any last comments about it? Oh, no. Wait a minute. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, open and close your eyes again. Yeah, okay. Well, now you smudged it. You ruined it. Thank you. No, it looks good. <laughs> Are we ready to take a look? Sure. Okay. <laughs>